Hi, today's good person to know is Fassel Butt. He's an American entrepreneur and an investor based in London. He's best known for co-founding Hamilton Bradshaw Real Estate with James Kahn. And in this video, Fassel talks about failure and says it's part and parcel of being an entrepreneur and Fassel is not fazed by it by one bit. In fact, he hired Eddie, a chap who had failed five times because Eddie had learnt important lessons and Fassel wanted to harness those valuable lessons learnt. Fassel says there's something special about failure and I'd have to agree. For one, it tells us what we're good at but also what we're bad at but not necessarily even that. It can possibly tell us that now isn't the right time for what we're trying to achieve. The point is, you can make any excuse you want about failure, but the key thing is not to give up. Look at Abraham Lincoln, who failed for 29 years before successfully running for presidency. Fassel says failure is stubborn and that it doesn't leave us throughout our business journey and talks about leadership ideas. He says realize that everything that can go wrong will go wrong and to accept that, to develop a dream team and work together pulling in different strengths. Serendipity has its place but Locke also has a part to play. He says, take things into perspective and look at the bigger picture to know your competition and be resilient. Interestingly, he says, make yourself redundant in your business. And he explains why and says that as the business grows, you need to slow down and step away from the detail. Fassel concludes by saying, you need to squeeze out of the 900 pound gorilla intuition, instinct and hindsight because failure is a badge of honour. So if you're going through a process where you're thinking you're about to fail, take stock. Realise that if it is going to fail, there's nothing you can do about it, but that you can learn important lessons for your next chapter. So I hope you enjoy this video and thank you for watching. That nasty F word that makes us all so uneasy. Failure. Roughly a third of businesses in the UK go on to fail within three years of starting up. I recently hired a guy that failed at five different businesses. He's a five-time failed entrepreneur. And this guy, Eddie, would be dismissed as unemployable by most. Eddie stands out. He stands out with his natural business savvy, his spontaneous style, his quirkiness and poisy quirky and his ability to make sound of business decisions. In fact, this guy possesses some of the best raw business intuition I've ever come across. There's something special about failure. Quick look at the CV. It reads like the career of a mediocre politician or a failed businessman, doesn't it? 1831, lost his job. 1833, failed in business. 1836 has a nervous breakdown. Any people can relate to this? Nervous breakdown? 43, defeated and run for nomination for US Congress. This 19th century politician doesn't sound very successful, does he? That was Abe Lincoln's 29 years before successfully running for president in 1860. 29 years of failure. The thing about failure is that it's stubborn. It doesn't leave you alone. It can catch up to you at any time at any stage of your journey in business. From inception, to growth phase, to exit. There isn't a silver bullet that I can hand to you today. What I will do is talk to you about some leadership ideas that can help combat the beast that is failure. So let's get started. First of all, everything that can go wrong, will go wrong. Beware of Murphy's Law at the very early stage of business. It is very, very real. Accept it as a given. The best way to prepare for the rocky startup period is to develop a dream team. There are many great examples of strong business partnerships. Great co-founders who founded the perfect team. Wozniak and Jobs, two of my favorites. Jobs had the vision to design great products, and Woz had the technical ability to create awesome hardware and software. Together, they created amazing customer experiences. Finding a co-founder is your first test of your ability to build the human capital of your business. Choosing the wrong one could lead to failure. Once you've identified the talent gaps and secured the right individuals, there's going to be culture clash, ego clash, every kind of clash you can think of. Founders, it's down to the founders to curate the convergence. They must bring everyone together. Even the incredible Hulk, so there's plenty of these guys in the workplace, we can be tamed and you can harmonize them with everyone else. There's a place for serendipity in business. Sometimes the perfect opportunity
opportunity comes along at the perfect time, and luck has a part to play. But serendipity doesn't just happen. A painter will spend days working away at the detailed scenes of his artistic canvas. But to fully see the effectiveness of his work, he must take a few steps back and judge the work in its entirety. Like the painter, the entrepreneur must master this waltz between the micro and the macro. But as business growth picks up, too often we get stuck in the detailed scenes of our painting. The ability to maneuver swiftly through the everyday boring stuff, but also sweat the big stuff is vital. Ask yourself the big strategic questions. What competitive threats lie ahead in our industry? Do we have the resilience to deal with the market crash? Bill Gates used to have two think weeks a year. These think weeks involve Gates staying in an isolated cottage without any communication with the outside world. As the pace of business growth speeds up, entrepreneurs actually need to slow down. Like the painter stepping back from the canvas, entrepreneurs need to step away from the detailed scenes and focus on the entire painting. And if the painting is painted right, it will probably include an exit plan. For the exit plan to work, the entrepreneur needs to work hard at making himself completely redundant in the business. And we need to kind of rethink about this word redundant because it often has a negative connotation. But that's exactly what the entrepreneur needs to be doing in the later stages of his business. The commander is judged in his absence, not in his presence. When Alexander the Great was just 33 years old, he wept. He wept because he had no more worlds left to conquer. Alexander may have been an unrivaled general, bold, inspiring, tactical, but his succession plan, it was just plain lousy. On his deathbed, when asked who should rule after his death, he supposedly answered, the strongest. Before long, a power struggle followed in Alexander's empire. All 5.4 million square kilometers and 70 cities of it started to crumble. Luckily, modern armies take succession planning a bit more seriously. In the modern military, succession planning is systematic, and leadership pipelines and talent pools ensure leadership continuity. Unfortunately, in business, succession is rarely executed with such precision. This is perhaps the hardest piece of the management puzzle. You can go through the entire journey of business and fail right at the end if there isn't a smooth handover to the next tier of leaders. And this is what I call the final failure. We need to get comfortable with this guy, with the beast, and learn to harness it and squeeze out of it its powers, like intuition and instincts and hindsight. There's a saying in California where I spent several years. It's that failure is a badge of honor. You never hear this in this country, but it's common in California. This nasty F word, come back to it. Lincoln faced it, Steve Jobs faced it, Alexander the Great even faced it. You're gonna face it. Everyone has to face the 900 pound gorilla. Look at it straight in the eye and get ready for combat.